the Lax Factor Podcast. What is up, College Lacrosse fans? You're watching the first episode of a new segment slash show that I'm calling Lacrosse Lines, where I'm going to go through every Friday morning and rip through DraftKings betting odds for the upcoming games that weekend. Now, one thing that is very clear, I am a terrible better. I am good at giving my opinion on who I think is going to win a game, and I can even get the spreads kind of right the problem being, whenever I've actually put that into trying to make legit betting picks in lacrosse, it hasn't always panned out for me. So my goal this year is going to be stack wins. Now that this is the first year in New York I can bet on college lacrosse, I'm going to go heavy into money line. I don't care if that money line bet only pays me $0.08 cents on the dollar. If you play the stock market and you play with crypto – you're cool with an 8% return on any investment. So for me this year, it's going to be pick winners and pick winners all the time. And I'm going to start dabbling in overs, unders, spreads, and things like that, where I think I have a legitimate shot, where I think the odds makers got the odds wrong. So this week, I'm not going to talk about the next weekend's games. I'm going to do that next Friday. This week, in today's really short episode here, kind of an introductory uh, show, trying to figure out how I'm going to do this and how this is going to roll, I'm going to talk about futures, and I'm only going to talk about probably about the first eight or so, and uh, I'm going to tell you with the bets that I took out. Now, very important, this is not financial or betting advice. I am a moron. Do not place any bets based on anything that I say here. This is for entertainment purposes only, and uh, it's just I'm mostly going to cover this from an angle of here's what I know about these teams, and that's it. Do not place bets based on my information. Do not blame me if you take one of take take some of these tips and use them and lose because I'm not telling you to do crap. This is your own money. Do not bet with money that you can't afford to lose. All all that good crap disclaimer. So let us dive into it here. And I'm basing this off of DraftKings. So I, as I get used to this, I'll probably pick some other um, some other sports books to use because they may have different odds and different um, games that I don't have access to. For instance, I don't have access to any teams in New York, for example, because New York is stupid. So I'll end up using others, but for the for the purposes of this, because I don't think there's any New York teams other than let's say maybe Cornell that are going to win the title, and I don't think Cornell's going to win the title this year. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll do I'll do a little bit better of a job making sure I'm covering all of the New York games as well. Probably I won't use DraftKings with my location because I have an app on my computer now that tells DraftKings what my location is and all that crap, so it removes the New York teams from from play here. Anyway, let's start with Maryland. Maryland at, uh, at at plus 400. I, I don't like this the odds here. I think the risk versus reward is too high, partly because repeating, statistically speaking, doesn't happen all that often. Even Virginia's more recent repeat was a year removed with COVID and everything like that. Um, and then not to mention, I don't know where they're getting this number and putting Maryland as the favorite. It's obviously not based on the fact that it's obviously not based on their roster makeup here because there's no world in which any lacrosse guy is sitting here thinking, yeah, Maryland's the favorite. There are people who probably gave Maryland the number one nod, let's say media member wise for the preseason poll, just re uh, rewarding them for last year's success with betting last year's success should not matter that much that they're giving Maryland. They're making Maryland the odds on favorite here at this point. I just don't think that's that's accurate. That's not a bet I would take. Risk too high, reward too little, and to boot, I don't think Maryland repeats. The only people I think that are going to be mad at that and boo me are going to be the Maryland fans because every other college across fan is sitting here thinking, hey, Maryland's going to be good. They're going to be a top 10 team. They could be a top 5 team. But you lose uh, a starting long pole. You lose all four of your short stick D mids, two of them all American caliber players. You lose your top four leading scorers to graduation and your fifth leading scorer to a season end ending injury. You have no legitimate offensive threat that is worthy of even getting your number one. So I believe they gave the number one to Makar, which I think is deserving. Brett Makar, you know, one of the top three defenders in the country. Um, so Maryland's going to be good. I just don't think Maryland's going to be good enough to win another title. And I think these odds are a little bit delusional and off. And this is where I think for the futures bets, you could take advantage of that a little bit. Um, Notre Dame sitting at plus 500. Why I hate that 
is because Notre Dame was a top five team last year that didn't make the NCAA tournament. And the reason being, the person that put together their schedule put the schedule together as if they don't understand how college lacrosse works anymore. Now, last year, Notre Dame did not anticipate the ACC was going to have a 4-10 and team in it, nor did they anticipate that that 4-10 and team was going to be one of the teams they played twice. But that's that could happen to them again. They play pretty much the same crap schedule as they did last year, which opens them up to they have to play two ACC teams twice. If the ACC strength of schedule gets dragged down because Syracuse or UNC can't stay out of the basement, uh, or heaven forbid there's two ACC teams that finish under 500 this year, they might not be able to put together a resume again that's good enough to get them in. They're going to have to beat – all of the big cats that are on their schedule in order to get in versus having a little bit of wiggle room. So that's my problem with Notre Dame sitting at plus 500 here is their schedule is built in a manner that they have. It's almost like a football D1 football schedule when you're a team trying to compete for the national title. One, you can almost not lose a game, especially not early, especially in the old days before the playoffs. And uh, I feel like Notre Dame's got a schedule like that. If they lose too many of their top non-conference matchups, they risk not getting in because they don't play enough games to build a resume, you know, in some sense it's worthy of getting in, especially when they weigh the RPI and all that. So I don't like uh, Notre Dame. At, and, and to boot, I don't know where they get off putting Notre Dame, a team that didn't even make the NCAA tournament last year, in as the, the second favorite. Like, where's the logic in that? Like, there, there. I don't. I, I feel like that's just media hype, or maybe the person, the odds makers here are Notre Dame fans. I don't get that pick at all. Um, not to say that Notre Dame couldn't win the title; they absolutely could. I just have, I have no idea where they're, what they're basing that those odds on. Now, my favorite odds here is, is the is Virginia sitting at plus five fifty. I took a bet out on Virginia. At, at plus 550. I don't even know what the odds were at the time I took the bet out. They may have even been higher than that. I think most people that are paying very close attention to college across would agree with me that the two, probably if you had to pick a favorite, and picking favorites does not mean I think Virginia's going to win the title. It's never that cut and dry. Injuries matter. How teams gel matter. How, how the other teams on their schedule end up being matter. I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but I think the two favorites, in my opinion, and by most people that pay as close of attention to college across as I do would be Virginia and Georgetown. Virginia, because they bring almost everybody back. They add a, a transfer like Thomas McConvey, midfielder from Virginia or from Vermont. They are a very good lacrosse team that brings almost their entire core of players back from last year. And that's rare when we're looking at it. Notre Dame can't say the same. Maryland certainly can't say the same. Even Georgetown can't say the same, except Georgetown went out and just picked up an absolute you know, huge haul in the transfer portal. So Virginia at plus 550 and Georgetown at plus 850. I actually took futures bets out on both of them for the same dollar amount. I'm not a great betting strategist, but I just figured I was willing to eat some of the profit if Virginia were to win to take that d uh, second chance on Georgetown winning. So for me, it was just a, a numbers game. Duke at 850. I don't like that one. Again, uh, I don't, I don't, I'm thinking that the chance that one of these three teams win the title is pretty high here. Overall, I just don't see Notre Dame being, you know, favored ahead of Virginia and Georgetown here. I think Duke has a shot. Duke just hasn't gelled well offensively over the last few years. And then we jump from Duke here at plus 850 to Yale at 1400. So from here on down, I have no opinion. At this point, you're just throwing pasta at the wall and seeing what sticks. You're lobbing grenades, you know. All that crap. So down here, I'm not even going to get into these. Do what you will. If I said, if I had to, if I had to pick someone that I was going to take a long shot on, once we get into here and we're above, you know, the Yale region, Rutgers, Princeton, and all of them, I think the team I would take my shot on down this low. I think I'd probably go with Ohio State at 2200 here, just because they 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 offensively they lost uh, uh, who is it Reed Jackson Reed no not Jackson Reed I forget who their uh, who their kind of you know big goal scoring attackman was last year I'm just drawing a blank here but you bring back um, a solid group of returners uh, a couple of preseason All Americans a couple of transfers on the defensive side of the ball that bolsters their roster. 
Um, so I like Ohio State maybe once we get down here this low. North Carolina and, and Ohio State being in the same league in terms of odds is absolute lunacy and just proves to you that the odds makers that put this together have no idea what the hell they're doing. The fact that Brown is in here at 2,800, anywhere near, uh, you know, okay, maybe once we get down this low, but the fact that Brown is more favored than some of these other teams down here, I don't get that either because Brown lost just a, a ton of talent across the board. So, like I said, not to shit on any of these teams. It's just like these odds are all over the place. So do what you will. This is just my first attempt at kind of talking through rationale behind the odds, what I think about the odds, what I'm personally doing. Do not do anything. Do not base any bets that you place on my information, like I said, because I'm a moron. So this is not betting advice or financial advice by any means. But that is my take. And if you come back next Friday, we'll go through and we'll talk about all of the game lines, including the games from New York that I'm not allowed to bet on here in New York. Uh, because there's a bunch of good games. And like I said, I'm going to take a lot of money line bets just try, just because I, I, I'm very good at picking the winners. I'm not so good at playing against spreads and overs and unders and all of that. I, oh, I tend to overthink things a little bit too much. Too much data ends up uh, uh, causing paralysis in my decision making, and I end up stinking. But I'm going to try it. I'm going to chronicle it all. I'll, I'll have a, a URL up that I'll put in every single one of these videos every Friday that takes you to my lacrosse lines page where I will in, just every week show you my picks, and we'll see what picks I got right, what picks I got wrong. So, uh, you know, I'll put myself out there. And uh, you can chirp the ever living crap out of me if I if I if I'm stupid as it pertains to this. But this is what I'm going to try to do each and every week, every Friday. So the schedule moving forward every Friday, lacrosse lines every Friday morning. The lacrosse lines will come out every Sunday morning. The college lacrosse show recapping all the weekend's games, and every Wednesday we'll do a little bit of pro lacrosse talk mixed with previewing that week's college games that are upcoming. So be sure to like, be sure to su subscribe, be sure to come back. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And Hoost is out. The Lats Factor Podcast.